Uh, hi, good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm Dr. Priyanka, and uh, today's uh, prosthetic dentistry lecture. Okay, so learning outcomes are as follows. Um, the first one is to describe the FPD terms, terminologies, explain the parts of an FPD, and discuss the indication, contraindication, advantage, and disadvantage of an FPD. Okay, coming to the introduction, so the FPD basically pertains to restoration and replacement of the artificial of sorry a replacer of teeth with artificial substitute that is attached to natural teeth root or implant right which are not removable okay coming to the definition according to the GPT which is the glossary of prosthodontic terms so a partial denture that is looted or otherwise secured retained to natural teeth root or dental implant abutments that are furnished that furnish the primary support to the prosthesis is known as a fixed partial denture okay so any part of um any part which is uh, we call it a partial denture which is fixed to a tooth structure which is cemented to a tooth structure is known as a um, fixed partial denture, okay? Functions of an FPD is to provide occlusal function, right? To aid in occlusion, to provide arch integrity, to maintain the relationship, occlusal relationship, protect and pre preserve the remaining structures. Indications of FPD is one or two adjacent teeth which are missing in the same arch. Supportive tissue should be healthy. So there should be suitable abutment teeth. Patient should have a good health, right? And um, patient is maintained. Patient is motivated and is able to maintain the good oral hygiene and patient preference. Patient prefers an FPD over an RPD. Yeah. Contraindications is. The supportive tissues are deceased, so there is some periodontal involvement in the tissues. Suitable abutment teeth are not present. Patient is in poor health. Yep. Patient is not motivated for the processes and patient has poor oral health. Advantages are um, to basically maintain... Uh, it, it, the FPD gives us stability and... Um, it keeps the teeth in place, right? Also provides good aesthetics, function, and preserves the heart form. Um, coming to the disadvantages, so um, any oral health uh, risk which are present would create a recurrent decay or periodontal diseases, right? So it should be, um, it causes us disadvantages, right? Um, yes, it is a little difficult to clean compared to a removal partial denture. FPD can compromise the abutment teeth, increasing the risk of future root canal or tooth loss in the abutment teeth. So it has to be maintained well. It is not indicated if restorative or periodontal condition of abutment teeth is Okay. So here coming to the common terms, which is our in the learning outcome. A crown, veneer, inlay, onlay, abutment, pontic, connector, and retainer. So um, we'll go in detail in a f of few and uh, the rest, pontic, connector, retainer, these are separate topics. So I'll take it up later in detail, but here I'll just I'll use a few points about it. Okay, so a crown, it is a cemented extracoronal restoration that covers... The outer surface of a clinical crown okay so it's like a restoration which covers the full surface of a tooth yeah so that is basically a crown in simple terms primary function is to protect the underlying tooth structure and restore the function for aesthetics so types are full veneer crown and partial veneer crown in partial you have three quarter crown which is both for posterior and an anterior reverse or modified three quarter crown which is for posterior 7 8th crown for posterior pinlage for anterior inlay and onlay. Okay, so these are not basically frequently used nowadays. Yeah, full veneer crown, okay, which is cast metal, so it can be any um, crown basically depending on the material. 
So it covers all the crown. The restoration is a full or complete veneer crown, right? So it covers the whole tool surface. It may be fabricated entirely by gold alloy or some other untarnishable metal. Ceramic veneer fused to metal. So there are many, many materials which are present. Yeah. So coming to the indication and contraindications, teeth that have extensive coronal destruction by caries or trauma, which we have to restore. Um, and restoration alone is not enough, so we need to cover it up. Restoration of choice whenever maximum retention is needed. Okay, so we need an extra amount of retention. We can provide it with a crown. Indicated in RC treated tooth, commonly done to correct the occlusal plane. Okay, so we do it in this F in FMR cases. That's the full mouth rehab cases. In even a few normal cases, we are doing it in. Contraindications is um, it has a less than maximum retention resistance then it is contraindicated wherever intact buccal or lingual wall exist okay where enameloplasty is there and for high aesthetic requirement like in anterior teeth okay so crowns is not indicated advantages it is strong it has good retentive qualities it can be modified form and occlusion easy to obtain adequate resistance form okay disadvantage is that yes it removes a lot of tooth structure and there is a display of metal if you choose um the material which has right partial veneer crown is an extra coronal metal restoration that covers only part of the crown and is considered to be a partial veneer crown okay so only covering a part of the crown and rim and uh, few portion can be um, um, uh, remaining sorry yeah coming to the indication so clinical crown of an average length or longer okay it can be done in intact buccal or labial surfaces well supported by sound tooth structure right so tooth structure is sound it can be done short teeth it is contraindication short teeth because the resistance and retention form will not be enough and it will keep getting dislodged high caries index in patients extensive destruction partial crowns are not indicated not used in regularly in endodontically treated teeth poor alignment bulbous teeth big big teeth and very thin teeth so you see there is a lot of this, uh, contraindication for this one yeah advantages it conserves the tooth structure easy access to the margin, less gingival involvement, and verification of seating, which is simple, okay? So, um, the seating is a little bit more simpler than the full crown, yeah? So, um, uh, so if, you, if it's done well, then the, um, the chances of getting dislodged is less, yeah? Uh, disadvantages is that um, less retentive than a full crown, a limited adjustment of path of withdrawal. So we um, there is less adjustment which is there. Yeah. So um, uh, from the path of withdrawal, right? So it is very limited. Okay, not indicated in vital teeth. Okay, so now coming to three quarter crowns. So you don't need to know the details of this. So usually these things are, yeah, not commonly done anymore. So you can see that only three quarter preparation is done. Yes, with the ledges. Yeah, so you can see the occlusion loop, and this is the proximal loop. This is the three quarter crown. Okay, so leaving one surface and preparing the three quarter. Yeah, so you can see the different views okay so a reverse modified three-quarter crown so that is an example yeah um okay so indicated in case of lingual of uh, lingually inclined teeth yeah so usually it's indicated in this uh, when the buccal walls are destructed due to caries or trauma with the lingual walls intact right 
So liver wall is intact and then you a buccal wall is destructed. So you take make a preparation involving the buccal wall. Okay, here it's uh, you can see the photo of a seven eighth crown preparation. Yes, only one portion is intact. Okay. Coming to laminate veneer or facial veneers. Okay, veneers. Yeah, so only one portion is prepared. So it consists of a thin layer of dental porcelain or cast ceramic that is bonded to the facial surface of the teeth or the tooth. It is used in situations requiring an improved cosmetic appearance of the interior teeth. So very commonly done to improve the discoloration, shipping, um, uh, to cover, you know, for smile designing. So, you know, those purposes. Okay. Coming to pin ledge. So yes, this was also done before. Now it's not done anymore. A partial veneer retainer preparation incorporating pin holes to provide retention. So you can see that different pin ledges are uh, there. Yeah. All right, and uh, yeah, and then you make a restoration on top of that. Yeah, so it was done before. Indication, contraindication, advantage, and disadvantage of a, a partial veneer. Okay, okay, coming to an inlay. Okay, so this is an inlay. So, um, a fixed extra coronal restoration, a dental restoration made outside of the tooth to correspond to the form of the prepared cavity, which is then looted onto the sim onto the tooth, okay? This is an inlay, it goes inside the tooth structure, okay? Inlay may be used as a single tooth restoration for proximal occlusal or gingival lesions with minimal or moderate extensions, okay? They may be made up of polar or ceramic materials. Indications are small carious lesions, adequate dental support, low caries rate, patient requests for bowl restoration. So some patients specifically requesting of specific material restorations, okay? Contraindications, high caries index, poor plaque control, MODs, it's too big to create an inlay and it's going to be unstable. Um, poor dental support, which requires a wide preparation. So in that it is contraindicated. Okay, coming to onlays, a restoration that restores one or more cusp and adjoining occlusal surface or the entire occlusal surface. Okay, so one or more cusp, okay, together with the occlusal surface. It is used for restoring more extensively damaged posterior teeth, needing wide mesoocclusal distal restoration. Okay. Indications of this is worn or carious teeth with intact buccal and lingual cusp, MOD, amalgam requiring a replacement. So, yes, amalgam was used in the old text and now you can just call it as MODs, right? A low carious rate, contraindication is high carious risk, poor plaque control, short clinical crown, right? Or extruded crowns and bruxism okay so photo of inlay and this is an onlay right it consists of cusp and full occlusion and this is also an onlay right okay now coming to another learning outcome that's a part of the fixed partial denture um so this is a pontic which we replace abutments right um connector is here right retainer right connector and retainer right yeah i think and this is that e dental span right so we'll just go into detail uh all these uh okay so these are the abutments right the tooth that we prepare okay in short so a tooth or a portion of the tooth um, or portion of a dental implant that serves to support or retain the processes is known as an abutment, okay? Coming to type of abutment, so we can have tilted abutments, we can have a cantilever abutment, we can have a pyre abutment, yep. 
So two are straight, one is tilted, both are tilted, yeah, and post and core abutment. All right, coming to retainer, so any dental process that is looted, screwed, or mechanically attached or otherwise screwed to natural teeth, root, or dental implant that furnishes the primary support of a dental prosthesis, okay, is known as a retainer. Coming to pontic, an artificial tooth, okay, pontic here, this is pontic. An artificial tooth um, on a fixed dental prosthesis that replaces a missing natural tooth um, and restores its function and usually fills the space previously occupied by the clinical crown. So this is known as a pontic, okay? All right, so now you can basically see clearly what a retainer is, yeah? All right, so connector is the attachment between the pontic and the retainer. Yeah, pontic and the apartment, if you want to call it, in the uh, FPD, right? And retainer is the outer surface, yeah? Here. The portion of the, okay, so we're talking about the connector now. A portion of a FPD that unites the retainer and a pontic is the connector. Okay, so it joins the pontic and the retainer by an, a surface known as a connector. Okay, so that is the connectors, right, guys? All right, so this was um, the introduction and in short about usually everything we cover in FPD, we'll be covering in detail about connectors, retainers, and the rest of the FPD topics. But this was just an introduction, so just know the basics. This is just a basic topic. And for more references, you can refer to Schillenberg, Chalman, and uh, Rosenstein. Okay, Chalman and Rosenstein. So these are the three standard textbooks which are used for an FPD, all right? And for further questions, you can come and see me um, on level 20 and uh, yeah, in polyclinic three in the process department or find me around guys, all right? So thank you so much for patient listening and uh, for further questions, I'm always available. Yeah, thank you.